Hey everyone, welcome to the Sekiro Boss Rush Guide. Boss Rush Mod Guide. Oh, good lord, that's so hard to say. This will be the whole mod. I'm going to be walking you through uh, my strats. I will have a paste bin to my notes in the description. A link to the paste bin of the notes in, this, in the description. Let's jump into this. So, uh, you want to skip this? doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, but as soon as the second cutscene starts, your timer starts. So what we want to look for is the loading fire flame in the upper right hand corner. And as soon as that finishes, we want to spam start to skip the cutscene. So as soon as that happens, you want to spam start, which will skip the cutscene. And then, also I want to apologize for the audio, OBS uh, just kind of screws with my uh, recording, so sometimes it's hit or miss. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to grab this. You want to sell that and buy two skill points, the Shinobi Esoteric Text, two Gachin Sugar, and four Snap Seeds. And then we're going to go to Gyobu Oniwa. So the very first thing you want to do as soon as you get into this arena is turn to your right and there's an item. Pick it up. There's two small coin purses and we need those for what we're going to buy before Lady Butterfly. Yeah, so there could be some encoder problems with this. So the thing with Gyobu is he likes to run away a lot, so you want to stay close to him. Um, whenever he starts to run away, be ready to use your grappling hook. And really just can't just parry him. But that's for every boss in the game, so. Just gonna let this play out. There's not really much to say here. I'll show you what I mean by uh, if he hasn't already done it. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. So uh, now that I think about it, I am using a mod to change the regular Kusabi Maru into the black mortal blade so i'm not actually sure i haven't tested it yet but i'm thinking the black mortal blade might have an extended hitbox just by a little bit so uh just be wary of that well you're watching this video but that's the only other mod i have besides the boss rush mod okay now we are gonna go fight some mini bosses but first we need to go back to the dilapidated temple and we need to obtain the Makiri counter level 1. We need to enhance our attack power and then we are going to go to General Tenzen Yamauchi in the mini boss section. Okay, so if you take a if you lock onto him and then you take a wide berth, you can get a free count, a free stealth flow just by running up on him. I still find this dude so hard to counter sometimes, just because his move set is so sporadic or erratic. Yeah, there we go. I don't know if sporadic would work there. Yep, see, there's the encoding settings. Messing with the video. I might remake this uh, guide in the future when I have a better PC, but... Okay, so we want to go to uh, Chained Ogre 
As soon as you get in, use a gachi and sugar, run up on this guy, kill the mob on the left. This is very important. If you kill the guy on the right first, the guy on the left will just keep parrying you. Okay, so we want to run up, and right near this rock, we want to go into sneak, and you want to make sure that you get the death blow on him. So basically the trick for this boy is just to zoom around him and use uh, uh, charged R ones. Yeah, couldn't think of what it was called. Uh, I fucked this up here, big time. So what you want to do when he does that is uh, he gives you an opportunity to. Um, Grapple back onto him, but I didn't get it there for the rock, but you want to take that opportunity if you see it. Because we want to get up as close to him as possible so we can max DPS. As soon as you kill him, just split. Well, as soon as you get the item, you split. At least that's how I do it anyway. Okay, now we are going to go to Lady Butterfly, but first... We're going back to Dilapidated Temple to buy some stuff. Okay, so you want to sell your light coin purses. This is what we need them for. needed them for. And you want to sell your heavy coin purses. You want to purchase four prayer beads and two gourd seeds. You want to enhance your physical attack. Or physical... Uh, what's it called? Physical attributes and give the gourd seeds. And then you're going to work to Lady Butterfly. Okay, as soon as you get in the arena, you want to equip your healing gourd and your snap seeds. And then there is a trick that I'll show you once she does it. Here it is. So whenever she jumps on that rope, immediately start moving backwards. And if she does the grab, uh, she won't hit you if you just keep moving backwards. There's a certain point where you stop moving backwards, but you gotta you gotta really figure that out for yourself. And yeah, this becomes a counter deflect attack challenge. But yeah, every time she goes up there, you'll see I'm always like moving straight backwards. And then as soon as you down the first phase, you want to switch from your healing gourd over to your snap seeds. Heal first, obviously, if you need it. I whiffed there. Uh, yeah, this is exactly why. So you want to come to the center of the arena because that's where they all spawn and you want to use your snap seed. Don't use it anywhere else but the center of the arena because not all of them will die. Okay, and she likes to do this a lot. So if you do the backup thing and she jumps across your head, you just move backwards. And then as soon as she lands, attack. Incredibly close and probably should not have gone in my favor, honestly. I'm gonna try and set that down quietly so it's not super loud. Okay, so I we are gonna go to uh Ashina Allegiance Aze, who I was trying this run before I recorded this with an Xbox One controller. And my Xbox One bumpers are awful. So this was like the hardest thing in the world for me recently. And I thought it was me, like being bad, but then I switched to a PlayStation 4 controller and you'll see how well this goes now. Okay, so we don't actually do anything. We just warp to, we just come back here. Well, I guess we give the soccer a droplet, but I don't, that's not too important. Uh, and then we're just warping to Ashina Allegiance Gezaze. So the thing about the speed run, I may have already mentioned this before. Um, there is only one type of every mini boss because there are a lot of repeat mini bosses, but this uh, boss rush mod only has one type of uh, each mini boss. 
So we will be fighting each mini boss, but only one of them. So like for example in the main game and the actual game there's two long centipedes, long centipede enemies, but we only fight one. Yeah, see, I, I did that so much simpler. But like with my Xbox One bumpers, it was so hard. Okay, now we get to go to the monkeys. Okay, so there's a very specific strat that we do here. Um, you can see it here. I have kind of, I've explained it as best I can in my run notes on my pace bin, which will be linked in the description. But uh, yeah, you'll see it here. I don't know if I get the right pathing though here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to run through that waterfall as you saw um, and go down the hole and we want to come to this door and we want to open it. It's the very first thing you want to do. Because chances are the purple monkey will come down here and you do not want him to be able to see you because it's just way more of a pain in the ass that way. I think this is one of the ones that I had where you can see why I called it time killer. Okay, so you want to kill the white monkey as soon as you open the door, as you saw. You want to come down here. Green monkey more than likely will be down here, but if he's not, he'll be up there. We want to run up to this bell. We want to make sure he sets himself up there first before we ring the bell, or else the bell will not work, and you'll have to ring it again. It's just a small time loss, but still annoying. Okay, so we want to see where the purple monkey is at up there. Um, we want to see what he does. Okay, this is the one that uh, he did follow the correct pathing that I want. Sweet. I think I actually got a time save on this, like a gold split. Okay, so yeah, you can, as far as I'm aware, you can actually just sprint in here and kill him. Okay, now we want to run all the way to the exact opposite side of the dilapidated temple that we're on, but we want to go to the rooftop on that side. As you will see here. So I believe my next fight is actually like really bad. Okay, so we want to pay attention to where the orange monkey is looking. Usually he's looking the other direction from you, but sometimes he'll be looking at you. If the orange monkey is not there, you need to use your illusory hall bell to reset positions. Okay, now we are going to go to Genichiro. So we want to warp back to Dilapidated Temple. Uh, sell the heavy coin purse, sell one bulging coin purse, as you see here, heavy coin purse, one bulging coin purse, you want to purchase eight, uh, prayer beads and one gourd seed, you want to attain Makiri counter level three, you should have enough skill points for it, assuming you've been following the guide, um, enhance attack power, physical attributes, gourd seed, yeah, and then we're warping to Genichiro. So, Genichiro is my favorite fight, and definitely the fight that I'm best at, although I'm pretty sure I get a bad fight here. Maybe not, though. Yep, there's the lag. It's not as bad as usual, though, so that's good. So, in the first phase, whenever he does the slam down attack, he always follows it up with a Makiri counter chance. If you're doing this boss rush, you probably already know most of the stuff I'm telling you, but if you're new, I figured I'd give some tips to the game. If you're new and you don't want to actually like, play through the game. Although I definitely recommend you do because it's an amazing game, one of my favorites ever. Well, this looks like it's a pretty good fight so far. Still got almost three minutes to save, so. Okay, so in this, he can actually follow up with I think three, although he usually only follows up with two attacks. He can either follow up with a Kiri counter chance or a Goomba stomp chance. Um, it's really up to you to figure out when the tell is. They're pretty easy to tell, it just takes time to get used to. So, he likes to pull sneakies on me. Where he'll just randomly pull out his bow when I'm about to attack him. It's super annoying. So, I, I guess this was a really good fight. So, you want to skip that cutscene as soon as you can. Just wait where you are, because he... Oh, boy, that's rough. Um, so, it was, you couldn't tell there, but uh, wait there while you can. 
is bad when I'm watching it, but he always starts it with a Makiri Climber Chance. This is bad. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna let this play out, I guess. Rip and Coder. What is happening? Yeah, I'm gonna skip forward. Okay, so now we want to enhance our attack power. We want to work back to uh, Dilapidated Temple. Um, this is That was a safety strat, what I just did, enhancing my attack power with the Genichi Row memory. And we're just going to Corrupted Monk. You don't have to uh, enhance your attack power there. It's just a safety strat to kill Corrupted Monk quicker. So I am glad that the Genichi Row fight is the only one that's done that so far, and it was only that one phase. I'm upset about it, but... At least it was only that one. I want to say it'll do it in the future, though. Maybe it was just my video player, too. Maybe it'll look better on YouTube. I hope that's the case. I didn't even get to touch on Genichiro's lightning. I couldn't see the fight. So yeah, I like the extra attack power from Genichiro because uh, Corrupted Monk's health is a bitch and a half to wear down. And you need to wear her, po wear her health down to even have a chance of wearing her posture down. To killing her. To posture killing her, so. Ouch. And go just pop. Okay. Uh. So that was some bad deflection. Yeah, you really want to this fight. You really want to watch for her uh, her random unblockables because she likes to do that. Also, watch out for the spin. You don't want to get caught up in that unless you can deflect the whole thing. Because you get caught up in that, it does not feel good. So I am actually upgrading my PC, so I might try and redo this run, and if I can get a better time, I'll probably delete this run and upload a better one to YouTube. I don't know, I might just leave them both up. to warp back to, to the dilapidated temple to prep for Guardian Ape. Okay, so as soon as you get in here, you want to sell your two gold, two bulging coin purses. And then we want to purchase Gyoba's Broken Horn and the Shuriken Will Prosthetic Tools. We want to fit both of those. Um, and then we buy, we don't use the Shurikens, we just buy them so that way we can upgrade the uh we buy them so we can upgrade the spear so you want to fit both of these upgrade them until you get to spear thrust type loaded spear thrust type sorry and then you want to purchase as many spirit emblems as possible i think i forget to do this here maybe not nope i did it yeah you should be able to get 40 you need the spirit emblems um yeah, and then you want to enhance your physical attributes, give court seeds, all that. Uh, enhance the attack power with the Corrupted Monk and Genichiro attack power if you haven't already. And then, yeah, we're going to Guardian Ape. Um, as soon as you get in, you want to equip the Loaded Spear Thrust type. And then, uh, yeah. 
So, no, that was my other run. In one run, I got really lucky, and he let me get, like, 15 straight hits on him. I don't think that happens here, though. I'm pretty sure I still get a really quick kill on him, though. I hope so. Yeah, his hands can be hard to parry at first, but uh, you get used to it as you fight him. I've probably done this fight about 50 times. Actually, it's a lot more than that, now that I think about it. I have over 100 hours of this game on my Xbox One, and like, I think around 50 on my PC. As you can see, I've done 58 runs of this mod. Not all of those are completed, mind you. I would, I, I don't think I could complete 58 runs and only have my TV be 117, whatever the hell this is, I forget. Okay, so around half health, whenever he does this, where he raises his arms and runs at you on two feet, he's going to do this grab attack. What you want to do is you want to sprint directly backwards. As soon as he rolls over, you want to come behind him and charge R1 and then he's right in his ass. Shove your sword right up his butt. Okay, and now he's going to throw poop at me, but luckily, if you're close enough, you can just run under him and you don't even have to deal with it. Yeah, so this was still a really quick kill. As you can see, I still have, what, four minutes to save on this? I'm pretty sure I screwed it up, though. Yeah, actually, I, remember, I know for a fact I did. Yeah, this usually does not go this way for me. Usually it takes me a long ass time to kill his first phase and then I just wreck his second phase, but I screwed up so much on the second phase. You'll see. So as you saw, when he does that uh, overhead slam, um, you want to counter it, and then you want to use the thrust type as soon as he's down. And when he does this, you can just move to his uh, to his left side, your right side, until you get around his hip, and it's just free hits. I do want to make a video eventually detailing a strat that's slow, but you will not get hit once if you uh, can learn to do it. It's easy to learn too. So look for that to come out. I might do some guides on some other bosses too, I don't know yet. Oh, also, as you may have noticed, this is a uh, no cheese strap. I don't know why it was crouched there. But uh, anyway, this is a no cheese strap for bosses, so like no... Uh, snap seeds on corrupted monk that type of thing we do use some like cheese strats but they're meant to be used in all right i guess you can't really say nothing's like not meant to be used if it exists in the game, but like it's something that somebody could figure out on a first playthrough So like a good example is uh, for the true corrupted monk fight. Um, spoiler if you don't know what that is and you're just watching this for some reason. Oh, I mean I guess I could see somebody watching this if they wanted to just get an idea of the boss before they go to the game. But anyway, for the uh, corrupted monk second fight, for the second phase we do the tree jump where you get an instant death blow on it in the second phase. And we're going to go fight Grandpa. Okay, so yeah, go back to the lap at the temple. 
Once we get there, we're gonna sell one bulging coin purse. We're gonna buy four prayer beads and one gourd seed. As you'll see here, four prayer beads, one gourd seed. Okay, uh, you wanna enhance your physical attributes, enhance attack power, um, and give the gourd seed, give your gourd seeds. Okay, we're gonna go fight uh, the waifu and our grandpa. So I'm still not insanely good at this fight. I have a lot of experience with it. It's my second favorite fight in the game, but I'm just not great at it. Although I think I might do Emma here with uh, no hits. Oh yeah, that was that was an encoder. That was my game like actually lagging on me. I remember it. Yeah, this whole fight, or I guess just the Emma fight was pretty laggy. Maybe for maybe the first half of the Eugene fight. And then I think the second phase of Eugene, uh, the encoder started to break. So I apologize for that again. Maybe not though. Maybe it wasn't as bad as the first recording. Uh, okay, that one might have been my encoder. Okay, now it looks like it's fixed. Nice. Brutal finish here, by the way. Right through the neck. Okay, as soon as this cutscene comes up, you want to skip it, obviously, because your timer is running. Um, yeah, this is pretty laggy. So, for Ishin, whenever you swing and he does the, like, dodge thing, you never commit to two swings when he does that. And then for phase one Ichimanji, you just want to wait until the sword's coming down to hit the deflect button. Yeah, I can tell my game's lagging. Surprisingly, it's actually a lot harder to do these fights when the game is lagging like this. It throws my timing off. Yeah, see, you never want to take... And then he kept trying to do these grabs on me. I don't know why. It was kind of irking me, though. Like, and then I got really lucky there. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I, I framed through his sword somehow. So when he does that, like, charging thing, there's two things you can do. You can do, like, a deflect, and then you can Goomba Stomp him. I like to just run away until he does the Ashina Cross, so that way I can get a few free hits in, but whatever works for you. Okay, so we're working him, we're working him. We, we get through the first two phases of this fight. Okay, now here comes the hard part. See, I made the mistake of committing a few hits there, because I'm a dingus. Okay, so whenever you're far away and he does that, you want to run to one side and then jump as soon as he fires it off, because just running isn't enough. Yeah, see, you can Goomba Stomp him there. So when he does that, you want to sidestep him instead of try and counter him, because if you try and counter him, you will be screwed. Okay, so when he does this, you want to find a spot where there's not fire. Deflect, wait a second after the big combo's done, and then deflect again. Because if you deflect too early, he'll just cut through your defense. Step, side step. When he sidestep, when you sidestep him like that, don't go for more than three hits because uh, he has a, he has a high chance of doing a, an attack that gives him super armor, which he follows up with one of his fire attacks. It's really annoying. Yep, see that one. And then, yeah, that can happen if you don't time it right. When he does the super armor attack, you want to deflect, and then as soon as the unblockable comes up, you want to jump. As soon as the unblockable sign comes up, you want to jump. Whenever you're close to him, you do this. Just circle around him, he can't hit you. Or you can do that, that works too. Yeah, and then I was like, nah, I'm not gonna let you do that, old man. I'm just, I want this kill right now. And, uh, yeah. So that's the Grand Paishin fight. 
my second pick quite the game. And now we are going to go to the absolute worst fight in the game. I don't know whose idea this was, but whoever's idea it was at FromSoft should be fired immediately. Okay, we want to go to the dilapidated temple, sell one bulging coin for- wait, no. No, 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 no. Well, yeah, sell one bulging coin first. Hang on. You might actually need to buy two bulging, two bulging coin purses. No, no, I guess not. Yeah, okay, so what we want to do here is we want to sell one bulging coin purse, purchase Robert's firecrackers, uh, purchase the ceremonial tanto, purchase four prayer beads, we want to enhance the attack power using Ishin's attack power, and we want to fit the prosthetic tool, Robert's firecrackers. And then we want to warp to Headless Ape. So we want to equip the firecrackers and keep the spear uh, thrust type equipped. And then you also want your ceremonial tanto. It's just a safety strat, honestly. You should have enough, but I like to keep it just in case. And if you don't know what the ceremonial tanto does, it's basically just like Bloodborne's uh, five extra bullets. Actually, it's almost exactly like Bloodborne's five extra bullets. But yeah, same concept, except in this case it's five extra emblems. That was terrible. I hate this boss, dude. Like, when I tell you this is my least favorite boss, it's not close. So, as far as I remember, this was like a really bad fight. Which, I mean, I'm terrible at this fight. But after this, we get to go do a bunch of new bosses, so. So, we've done the easy part, and now comes the hard part, and the most annoying part, and I don't want to die every time that happens. Okay, so you want to wait for this asshole to come down. As soon as she comes down, or he, whatever, um, firecracker and start attacking. I hate this fight so much. And then she ran away, and he started... Like, they should have had him at least, like, break away from each other. I have so many complaints that I could lay out about this fight. Yep, and then I'm pretty sure I get killed here eventually. Yep, there it is. So at this point, I'm like super frustrated. Like, come on, just give me what I want. I was like, come on, come on, come on. This is it. And then she did this. And I was like, thank God that's over. Because now, second phase is super easy. And you don't even have to worry because it's just uh, the second phase of the first fight. But easier and less health, less posture, easier attacks, yeah. So thank god I got through that uh, as well as I did. I do know that for a fact that I lose time on this. Uh, I think it's like 30 seconds of time I lose on this. Which I don't even care about because we get all that back. You can see on my previous segment uh, how much time I get on uh, segments. Yeah, see, you can, on the live segment, you can see how much time on. Okay, maybe it wasn't 30 seconds, I don't know. Okay, so I was pretty close then to a PB. Okay, now we're going to go do a bunch of mini-bosses. Okay, 
So the mini boss list just goes Long Shadow Swordsman, Lone Shadow Long Swordsman through Long Arm Centipede Giraffe. So it's just one, two, three. I don't know. I didn't get to count it, but yeah, it's it's just five mini bosses in a row. At least for this split, there are more mini bosses, but I really only named it Mini Boss Gauntlet because it's five mini bosses in a row, and I didn't want to make splits for each of them. So this guy's easy at this point. Um, doing him earlier is a lot harder because uh, you don't have the posture to really deal with him. Well, I mean you do, but it, it's just a bigger pain in the ass if we did this any earlier. <sighs> so I do have a tip for this. Um, you want to try and stay in the center of the arena as much as you can. Because if you get into a wall, you can get screwed over. I've had it happen so many times playing through this game. Not just this boss rush mod either, like the actual main game too. Okay, that one's down. Now we're gonna go to Seven Ashina Spears, the very first one on the list, because there's two of them on the list. There's one at the bottom too, but we're not going to that one until way later. So we're just gonna kill the Seven Ashina Spears. You can come over here to get a death blow, but I screwed it up, so I actually end up fighting both phases. So I could have had an even bigger time save than what I originally had. And I also did that, so nice job me. Watching this is like, how did this go so wrong? But yeah, so I screwed up getting the death blow, so I have to fight both phases. It's not that hard though. Once you learn is, once you learn how to fight him. Thank. Goodness, this video turned out the way it did. I was really worried that like my encoder or just the quality overall would just be destroyed. But so far, I've only ever had I've only had like what two encoder problems? One with the Genichiro fight, and a little bit with uh, Ishin. Okay, so I hate that delayed one, and I'm honestly surprised watching this that I actually got the, uh, that I actually got the Mercury. That guy laughed as he died. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Armor. I'm pretty sure that dude laughed. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but... So I... I don't like this guy. Yeah, yeah, for the sake of your son, blah, 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 nobody cares. Lol. Nah, I just don't like fighting this guy, because he spends 90% of his attack winding up, and then the other 10% actually attacking. Turbo, what are you doing? I'm pretty sure I'd die here, actually. I think I actually die here. Yeah, I do. Who dies to Armored Warrior? Yikes. The only way I can honestly see somebody dying to Armored Warrior, like, legitimately, is if they don't know the gimmick. So I was like, please let this knock him off. Because I'm all the way out here doing this. So I was like, I don't know if this is going to knock him off or what. But luckily, the wolf was able to push him very hard. Okay, so now we're probably gonna go to my least favorite in this five boss, or five mini boss gauntlet. <sighs> it's Snake Eyes Shirofuji. I don't like Snake Eyes Shirofuji. Okay, so whenever this grab comes, wait until uh, she actually starts to pull back and then dodge to the right side. To your right side, not. Your right side, her left side. You can also counter the grab, but I have no idea how to do that or when to do it, so I just don't bother with it. 
And then whenever she does the gunshot, you can actually dash into her and she'll miss. So I'm actually hoping to, since since I don't have anything else to talk about right now, I'm actually hoping to submit this to speedruns.com, and I'm hoping that this will have let them make boss rush an official category because Dark Souls 3 has a boss rush category, so why should the Zeki run? Why did I split? That? We still have one more boss to go. Oh, wait, no, never mind. I didn't split there. That was my uh, timer. Just pausing. Okay, so this guy could be kind of a pain in the ass. Excuse me. It can be kind of a pain in the ass if you don't get uh, some parries right because then he takes forever. But we're in the this game. We got it. Ooh. I was like, come here, boy. Uh, yeah. Still got the time save, although it was very close. Okay, now we are going to Tokijiro with the glutton. We are skipping over, I believe, Shichiman Warrior. Is what we're skipping over for now. Okay, so the very first thing you want to do is you want to come up here. I'm pretty sure I get cock blocked by this monkey. Yep, I do. So if that happens, uh, yeah, just go to the corner and use it to jump. You want to come up here, kill all the monkeys. Um, just be patient, wait for them to come down. It's way less of a hassle if you just be patient, wait for them to come down, then try and fight him with all the monkeys down there. And then uh, again, charged R ones and hit and run. Hit charged R ones are gonna be your main sorts of DPS in this, um, and then you also want to do hit and run tactics whenever he gives you an opportunity. Usually he'll give you time for two charged R1s. You might have to deflect some things, obviously, because he's got a big sword, and big sword is scary. Big sword's scary. I imagine that's how Tokijiro would say Big Sword Scary. Although I guess he does talk in the actual game. He doesn't sound like a moron. You can also use Mortal Draw if you uh, like that idea better. I don't just because I don't like wasting the Spirit Emblems. Although I don't think we need them for anything else. Pretty sure I lose time on this one too, which is super annoying. Maybe I don't though. Maybe I don't. What's my PB on that? Oh wow, I got a gold split on that. Okay. I'll take it. Okay, now we're going to, in my opinion, the hardest bot hardest mini boss in the game. Uh, because she will uh, destroy your posture. Okay, so I didn't do it there, but what you want to do is when she gives you that uh, Goomba Stomp chance, you actually want to jump slightly backwards. Because if you just jump straight up, she'll actually move behind you, and it's really annoying. So yeah, like if you... You just gotta like angle it like right above her head. Because she has a weird uh, Goomba Stomp box, is what I call it. Bam. And then I'm pretty sure in the second phase she just absolutely wrecks me. Maybe not though. Yeah, it's called where'd my posture go because usually I have no idea where the hell my posture went. It's all gone. Yep, with this attack right here. 
That combo has destroyed me more times than you could ever count. Actually, most people watching this can probably count to 100. Obviously, it was hyperbole, but... That's the other thing about submitting this to speedrun.com, though. I don't know if they'll accept it just because of the Mortal Blade thing. I, again, I haven't tested it, but I think it might have an addition, like an added hitbox. Like, just barely. It's not, like, super noticeable, but in the Genichi row fight, it, it's, it, I think, if you watch it, it helped me a little bit. But, I, again, I need to test it. Okay, so that was done. I don't like to split on that until you get the item, but you can split whatever it doesn't matter. Okay, now we're going to go to Lone, in quotations, Shadow Vile Hand, because he has another dickhead friend in here. So, as soon as you get into this arena, you want to enter Sneak, and you can either turn to your left and just kill that guy, or make him into your puppet. I like to make, it, make him my puppet, as you'll see here, once this loads. Yeah, you go down to Ninjutsu, Puppeteer Ninjutsu, and then you enter Sneak. I didn't do it right there, which should have screwed me over, honestly. Making my puppet, and then we just go 2 1 bully on this guy. Whoop. So this actually went pretty well, aside from the fact that I kept getting hit by my own teammate. I don't know why I was in Sneak there. Oh yeah, this is the one where I end up death blowing my own, where I end up death blowing the uh, purple one, or er, the one that I turned into my puppet. I guess they're both purple. One is kind of a dark. Purple. And then I was like, "Come on, give this to me." Yep, and then there it is. <laughs> Can't believe I did that. I did I say 23, 24 seconds on that? Uh, where'd my posture go split? Was I that bad at that fight before? Bam. So yeah, I lost time on this, which sucks, but. Okay, back to the dilapidated temple. You are going to sell every single large coin first that you obtained. So it should be eight, which should give you 4,000. And now you're gonna buy all of the prayer beads and all of the gourd seeds. Uh, enhance physical attributes, enhance attack power, and give gourd seed. And we are going to go to Papa. Papa Owl. The first fight, not the second fight. Do not go to the second fight on this list. Actually, you probably could, but I don't think you have the DPS for it. Well, I don't know, actually. I really like this fight. I really enjoy this fight. It's probably my fourth or fifth favorite in the game. You can see, I can't tell if that was my encoder or my actual game lagging. I want to say it was my game lagging. I honestly should have been hit there, but thank god some iframes exist in this at least. Sorry, there's not really much for me to say here. I'm just gonna let this play out. Although I guess I will say that on the Xbox version, whenever when I was playing on there, because I uh, bought this for PC recently, but I had played through the game uh, literally 15 times on my Xbox. I don't know if that's a lot or not, but it netted me 100 hours. I got to 99 attack power on one new game. Um.
hundred percent of the two. But I will say that uh, on Xbox One, I don't recall ever seeing him use his fire punches in this fight. But he does it every single time I fight him in this. This whole game was so much harder for me my first time through on PC than it was my first time. Well, now I don't think like that. My first time on PC was so much harder than all of my Xbox playthroughs. Except the first Xbox playthrough is learning curve, obviously. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, in the second phase, whenever he does the shuriken shuriken jump slam thing, uh, you want to use your mortal blade. Or, you don't have to use it, obviously, but I find it very helpful. Except there, because he was close to death. So I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna take this. Bam! The other thing I wanted to say about that, uh, while we're still on it, is, uh, do not use charged R1s against him. He will com he will Mercury counter you and ruin your entire day. Okay, now we're going to go to True Corrupted Monk, my third favorite fight on the list. This is the second fight on the list. Why did I say my third favorite fight on the list? I was reading all on second on the list. Um, yeah, my third favorite fight in the game. Uh So, uh, you can just treat the first phase like a uh, false corrupted monk, or as I have in my splits, spooky ghost. Yeah, you can just treat this fight exactly like that one, because it is exactly like that one. Nice, nice Goomba. Yeah, her, luckily her posture is really easy to work here. Like, I almost want to say, if you're, uh, if you know what you're doing, I don't know what happened there. But, uh, you, I don't even think you have to hit her in, uh, down her vitality at all. Because what we want to do is we want to come up to this branch right here. We want to lock onto her, and we want to jump a death blow. Bam. Okay, now we're to the scary phase, because she can one-shot you with her, if you're not careful. Okay, she always starts the third phase out with the five spin, with the Beyblade attack, that's what I'm calling it from now on, don't, I don't care what you have to say, I'm calling it the Beyblade attack from now on. Um, yeah, and then she has this Terror Poison that she likes to throw out, it's super annoying. Yeah, I love this fight. It's like a better version of the Dancer of the Boreal Valley. That's what I like to compare it to. Another boss fight that I think, by the way. Although, that one I'm not good at. I had never seen that attack, that like combo, ever in my entire Sekiro career. She just like started like throwing her glaive all over the place. She's super weird. I'd never seen that ever. Up until recording this. Okay, now we're going to uh, one of my least favorite fights, probably my second least favorite. The only reason I say that is because of, okay, well, that was stupid, and I remember saying that that was stupid that that happened, but anyway, I get off track a bunch. Um, well, now I forget what I was saying. Goodbye, Thought Train. I'm back next year. 
Oh, yeah. Um, this is probably my least favorite fight just because of how much he likes to run away. See, he does a stupid jump back, and I hate it. It takes so much time. So, I found that the best strategy for this is just to stay up in his face. It's basically Gyobu all over again. And another boss, which I don't like. Um... Whenever he does this, you want to listen, you want to figure out the best time to dodge out of the way, or I mean, I guess you can counter it, but if you dodge too soon, he'll do the spinning attack where he turns around and that's your shit. Yeah, we don't want that one to happen, we don't want that to happen. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy this fight, it's just, I don't like how non-aggressive he is. I don't like how he doesn't stay in your face. But yeah, my tell for that is whenever he screams is the good time to go. And then whenever he does that firecracker thing, you may have noticed it in the last uh, uh, owl father fight, or in the last owl fight, whenever he does that firecracker like cross throw, I guess, that right there, you want to dodge into it, but to the right, and you'll get a free one or two hits. I don't know why I'm giving you tips. I guess I just need something to talk about. But uh, most people who are watching this are probably going to be veterans of this game who just want to see how quickly they can run through the game. Bam. See, like, that's only one down. My PB for this is 626.02. That's not okay. fight with like a person should not take six minutes. I, I, yeah, like I said, I enjoy this fight. There's only one fight in this game that I hate, and that's the uh, apes, that's the double, the twin apes fight. The, uh, Whose idea was this split? Guardian Ape and his bride. Or Headless Ape and his bride. That's the only fight that I truly hate. All the other fights in this game are gold. In my opinion. This one's probably my least favorite uh, good one. Yeah, that's how I'd describe it, honestly. Just because of the lack of aggression. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. I don't think he gave me a single Makiri counter chance in this. Maybe he did. Maybe he does the fire elephant. Thank you, Windows Defender Summary. As you can see, this fight just takes a really long time. I, I really don't know what to say while we're watching this. Oh, okay. He does give me the counter chance. So yeah, obviously you want to jump over the owl. Or just don't show it. I think that was my actual game lagging. Actually, I know for a fact it was. Very low, and it still just likes to lag on me. So, I think this might actually be a gold split. Maybe not. No, I would guess it is. Oh, wow, I beat my PB by a minute. <sighs> now comes everybody's favorite. Okay, we're going back to the dilapidated temple. 
<sighs> okay, you're going to want to enhance your attack power as soon as you get there with all of the attack powers that you have. You should have three. And then we're going to Demon of Hatred. I don't know what I was doing there. Yay, Demon of Hatred. Woo. I accidentally went to Divine Dragon here. Not a great look. So yeah, I had to use that to go back, be like, snap, snap, crackle, pop, pop. So yeah, I've already lost 20 seconds on that. Okay, now we go to Demon Hatred. Okay, I'm really not good at this fight. If I had to pick one fight that I was just god awful at, it's this one. I don't think anybody's really good at this fight, though. My problem is, like, over-aggression, i.e. greed. So, the first phase is really easy to deal with. The main thing with Demon of Hatred, again, is you want to stay in his... You want to stay up on him as much as you can. Like, every second of the fight you want to be up in him, except for in second phase when he does the running attack but we'll get to that when we get to that um but the other thing is you always want to run to his right whenever he starts doing an attack and uh the other thing is you will always get two staggers two guaranteed staggers for every phase unless your dps is just like crazy stupid but for this run it probably wouldn't be unless you use the dancing dragon mask at some point But yeah, first phase is super easy. Second phase is rob. Well, no, third phase is the hardest. So yeah, as soon as he does that like sprint away thing, sprint through char or sprinting charge, I guess it is. Um, you want to beeline it to him as soon as you can, like as soon as he gets done. I hate that stomping attack. There's first phase down. Okay, so what we want. What am I doing? Oh yeah, I was equipping the pellets because I was like, I'm not dying here. This is a really good run, I'm not giving this up. So we want to wait for him to do that and then uh, wait for him to do, he'll either do the charge attack or jump back. Okay, so this is what I was talking about when he does the charge attack. Um, in the second and third phase, if he does the charge attack, instead of running towards him, you want to run either to the left or the right, preferably the left jump as soon as the fire thing hits the ground and then you want to use grapple to it. <sighs> I haven't gone over the jump attack either which I'll go over when he does it. But yeah, like here when he does it, you want to be like super close in. Well, because you're already super close in, you don't need to worry about it. Well, I got worried there. I thought he was doing something like else. Okay, when he does this, you want to finish. You want to he'll do three attacks, and if you finish behind his butt, uh, he won't follow it up. But if you in front of him, he'll follow it up with two other attacks, which are really annoying. So try and stay behind him whenever he does that combo. I'm sorry, I'm trying to go over everything as fast as I can, but, like, the gameplay is so fast and just everything moves so fast that it's hard to get all in the right time. So yeah, here's the second stagger. Whenever he staggers, you want to just go ham on him. <clears throat> so yeah, when he does the jump attack, uh, as soon as he jumps, you want to run backwards, and then right as he's about to land, you want to jump and grapple to him. Okay, so there's three phases. There's two phases down. We've got eight gourds, and I'm pretty sure I end the third phase with zero. Here's my game lagging. I know for a fact it is because the timer stopped. 
I almost thought my game crashed because I did a recording of this before, which didn't record the audio. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I die here now that I think about it. No, I get screwed over. But uh, yeah, my game crashed right as I was warping to Demon of Hatred, which I thought was what was going to happen here. It wasn't, thank goodness. The run was fine. And then I did this to myself, played myself. He pushes me into the fire, which is like, wow, thank you, game. So I was waiting to resurrect until the fire went away, but then the screen started getting red, so I was like, yeah, I probably should get out of there. I wanted to make sure I was as far away from him as possible when I was healing. It probably was the, uh, would have been a smarter decision to run into him and heal, but it was fine. It worked out. So whenever he does this, you want to Goomba stomp him, and then when he'll do it a second time, and you want to Goomba stomp him the second time, too. It sucks getting stuck in this ring of fire, but there's not really anything you can do about it. So, in the normal game, you would likely have the, uh, uh, I don't remember what exactly it's called, um, but it's the whistle thing, which you would use to stun him in the third phase, but we don't have that because it's speed run, we don't have time to grab all that stuff, we don't have time to upgrade up to it. So when he does the ring of fire thing, I was going to mention it, but I was already talking. Um, it's really hard to tell what he's going to do through that because the fire like, blocks, his, blocks the view from him. So just be ready for anything. Oh, and then I hate this attack so much. Whenever he does this, you just want to run directly to one side. And then this stupid tree got in my way and screwed me over. Yeah, this fight does not go great, as you can probably tell. Actually sure when I'll have this video out hopefully soon today uh, the day I'm recording this commentary is May 19th 2020 I'm hoping to have it out by next Saturday so not this Saturday but next Saturday so <sighs> come on calendar come on so if you ever do get trapped in that like fireball thing you throws where it's like I did um, just hold back because he throws another one that follows it up and it can screw you over so I'm hoping to have this out by the 29th of May hopefully I can get it out sooner but that's like the latest I'd want to have it out I might even put it out this week Yeah, so I lost about 10 seconds on this. Which was kind of annoying. Okay, so now we're going to Blazing Bull. I hate the Blazing Bull. That's why I save it for this late in the run. Because in my opinion, this is just my opinion, for where it comes at in the actual game, Blaze It Bull, 420 Blaze It Bull, is the hardest mini boss in the game in the like actual normal game because of the where it comes from or where it goes in okay make sure you kill this guy so he doesn't get in your way although i'm sure the bull would do it for you honestly i'm sure he'd be happy to do it Okay, so you can deflect him. It's kind of weird timing. You have to get used to it. Um, just really for this fight, remember to use firecrackers and headshots do double damage. It's something like double damage. It might even be even more. It's definitely more. It's definitely more. It's probably like triple or quadruple damage. But yeah, I hate it. I 
Damn. Goodbye, friendo. Now we're going to go to the second chained ogre on the list. And this is the exact same fight as the very first one that we did. Except it's in a smaller room. So it's a little bit harder to avoid these shit boxes, but uh, if you know what you're doing, you'll be fine. Nice wife. Yeah, that middle thing can screw you over too. I have a bad habit of doing that. And bam, that's one phase. Yep, see, I, it's it's a lot harder to avoid the shitboxes in this room. Yeah, that's what I was talking about with the grappling hook thing. And then he kicks me right in the head. Maybe it was the back, I don't know. Okay, and I honestly thought that like maybe he would get stuck there. That, that was not my luck that day, but that would have been funny. And that's Shrek 2.0. I lost time on that, which I find really sad, but... Sorry. Okay, now we're going to Shigakichi of the Red Guard. This is the same fight as the Tokujiro fight, except for instead of poison, he spits fire, which will destroy your health. Um, if you come out onto this roof, I screwed it up here, so I was like, yep, no. no. <laughs> I just noticed that he broke the, he broke his jug on my head. So that was pretty sick. Um, shit, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So when I screwed that up, I was like, yeah, I'm going to uh, reset this. You can reset any fight with... I'm totally spacing the name. The bell thing. Not the illusory hall bell. What is it called? I don't remember. Um, okay, well, it doesn't really matter. But you can reset fights with that bell. I don't remember what the hell it's called. Um, anyway, the thing with this is instead of poison, it's fire. And he has armor on his front side. So you can't just abuse his front side, you gotta schmeck that booty for double damage. I believe this one is double damage. Schmeck. I'm pretty sure I lose time on this too, which is really annoying because that's two time losses in a row. Yeah, and then he will wreck your shit if you get caught in the fire. It was really stupid of me to do what I did there, but... It's fine, because I made it out of here alive, so... Yeah, I don't know why I didn't just finish that earlier. Yeah, you can see I had a big time loss here. Like, that should not have taken me that long. Okay, now we're going to seven Ashina Spears, uh, number two on the list. <sighs> okay, so as soon as we enter this uh, arena, I guess, you want to use the other Gachin Sugar that you bought at the beginning, or at least that you should have bought if you're following the guide. And then you want to run over here, and you want to run in between these two big bonfires, and we want to either kill this guy or puppeteer him. It's up to you. I like to puppeteer him. And then we are just going to, uh... 
We're gonna double team this boy. Bam. This was like really quick kill. I'm pretty sure I get a cold split on this now that I think about it. <laughs> that samurai just sparta kicked this uh option of spears. Okay, so now that guy's dead. And my game started lagging, I do believe. Maybe this is the encoder though. No, this is definitely the game lagging. Yeah, that was a gold split. Okay, now we're going to Divine Dragon. You want to enhance your attack power with the Demon of Hatred uh, memory. And then we are going to go get... We're going to go destroy a dragon. We're going to go destroy Puff the Magic Dragon. Ooh. Everybody's so high on this boss fight, but I really don't like it. I mean, it's not that I don't like it, I, I, but I don't feel as strongly about it as a lot of people do. Just, FromSoft gimmick bosses don't do it for me. And this is like the gimmick he used to bosses. This is like Yorm the Giant level of gimmick. Same reason I don't like the monkeys that much. At least this one's done well though. Like I will I will say that. This the actual uh dragon uh fight is done really well. Why didn't I just use the tree? I hope that bothers you for watching as much as that bothers me. Yeah, he, he does have some really cool visuals though. I don't know, I think it's bland. I think it's kind of bland though. Jump. Jump. So sometimes this pisses me off because if you're locked on, and you're running towards one that has lightning on it, and you're running towards like a tree thing that has lightning on it, your grapple hook will stay locked onto a different tree. And it's super annoying to deal with. Like, uh, I'll see if I can find an example in this. Maybe I don't though. Maybe I can't. I hope I can, because that means that this fight went relatively well, but. And I was like, throw it, throw it, throw it. I'm all, every time he does that, I'm always worried that he won't throw it, and then I'm just going to get screwed over. Although, I don't know how you get struck by lightning inside of a cloud, because you have to be grounded to be struck. See, here, here, here. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I'm trying to grapple onto this one on the left, and yet it's trying to make me grapple to the one on the right. Freaking piss me off. I feel like I didn't finish my sentiment before saying that. Yeah, and then I get destroyed right there because I'm an idiot. So now he starts to go ham on you. And now the other three branches come up. And now you can slap him in the face with some lightning. It's pretty sick. So 
So there's a way to get like the uh, grapple chance on this. I can never get it, so I usually just run up to him and stab him in the eye. Be like, huh? Okay, now we're gonna go do the Terra Twins, my absolute favorite. Just kidding, that's why they're here in the very last place. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to sell all of our heavy coin purses, which is four. You honestly, well, no, I guess you don't really need it. You want to buy the purple model gourd, modded purple gourd, and as many divine confetti as you can. Okay, now we're going to kill Shichiman Warrior. So, uh, the main thing with Shujimin Warrior is you want to take advantage of air death blows. There's a really good guide that you can find on YouTube on how to kill Shujimin Warrior really quickly. It's, it, it's helped me out a lot. I don't know if I do the strat here, but, uh, maybe I do. So, as soon as you get in here, you want to use your Divine Confetti, go in for a couple hits, you can do more hits than I did. Um, when these bigger ones start flying at you, or maybe it's just the little one, no, but when the little ones start flying at you, you want to run uh, directly horizontally, I want to say. There we go, okay, I did take advantage of the death blow. But anyway, when the little orbs come at you, you want to run horizontally, and then when the big orbs come in, you want to run horizontally, but more like inward towards him. And then when he starts jumping, you want to go for the air death blow. I can never get it here because he hates me. I don't think I got a terror. This is the most annoying thing you can do because it's just a time waster. I'm pretty sure I get smacked by it. Oh, never mind. Yeah, and then this happened, which I was super pissed about. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna head out and go use another gotcha and sugar, thank you. Which is not preferable, but it works. And then, oh, I forgot that happened. Yikes. Oh, well. Okay, and now we want to go to the headless. And as you might have seen, you get you also get two more divine confetti. So, okay, very first thing you want to do is use your model purple gourd, and then you want to use a divine confetti. And this is really just about being good at deflecting him. I am awful at deflecting the headless. If your uh, terror meter gets uh, more than three quarters full, or even half, I'd say half, use a modded purple gourd. My problem with the Shichi with the headless fight is that they gave it both a slowing effect and a terror effect. If it would have been one or the other, I actually would have really liked the headless fights, but because it's both, I detest the headless fight. Like, sure, give him a terror effect, that's fine. You can counter it. And then there's, like, the argument, sure, give him a slow effect, it's fine. You can just get good at deflecting him. Give him a terror and a slow, and then you're just screwed. Yeah, I really detest the headless fight. Okay, so that's the terror twins down. Last split. And this is the one that I am worst at. Not because I'm bad at this fight. This is actually the fight that I am second best at in the game after the Genichiro fight. But because of that, I rush Ishin uh, 2.0 way too much. So you can see that my best is four minutes. I'm pretty sure I lose time here because I all, every time I try and rush Ishin. So this Genichiro fight is just like the uh, Genichiro fight at the top of Ashina Castle, which sadly you couldn't see. Except for he doesn't use lightning in this. I messed that up, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so there's uh, Genichiro down. 
skip that. As soon as you get in here, use your Divine Confetti. It just makes this go faster. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I was like, what? So yeah, the first phase I do just fine. Like, first phase is, is turns out fine. And then second phase, I start to rush him a little bit. And then in the third phase, I'm just like, come on, I want to get this done. I want to get this done as fast as I can. And I end up rushing in. You'll see. Now you want to use a second uh, Divine Confetti. Then you want to come in for a couple attacks. Whenever he does the gun shooting, he's probably going to do that. Well, whenever he does that, like, uh, if he's combo the swing of his, uh, I don't even know what the hell to call that thing. Spear, I guess. The swing of his spear, then the gun, then the, then you can your counter chance. Whenever he does this, wait until he moves. Wait until he starts to move and then press the button. Okay, come on, Gene. Yeah, wait until he moves and then press it. I did not do that, though. I failed there. Wait for him to do this before you heal, or I can just not heal because I'm a dingus. So I got really scared here. I was like, well, I could end up screwed here, so. And then I was like, well, I'm out of yeah, I sugar. But yeah, I should have had this phase down by now already, honestly. If I would have just been smarter about it, this phase should have been down already. Yeah, you can just tell that I was rushing this. Like, I want to really just smash my PB, because right now it's at 119. But in the end, I only managed to lower it by a minute, which I'm still happy about, but I still think I could get it. I still think I could do better. Okay, don't use the uh, Divine Confetti here, because uh, when he does his lightning, when he did the lightning reversal, it is get rid of your divine confetti. I don't know why I kept screwing that up. I'm usually not bad at that. Make sure you use the lightning deflection. The lightning uh, deflection. Is it deflection or reflection? Make sure you just take your time with this phase. Or with the spear phases. Because he has so much hyper armor that it can just throw you over. So... Yeah, you can see I'm losing like a bunch of time on this. Um, I don't know whether to split like here when he does this or after I get the immortality severed. I wait for the immortality severed, but I could probably split before. But I don't know what the rule would be on that. Because depending on where you kill him at, um, it won't give you the thing right away. You saw it there, and there you can see my uh, my new PB is 118.16, which I am very proud about. So, uh, yeah, that is my Sekiro uh, boss rush mod guide. There will be a link, of course, to my pace bin. Um, yeah, it has all my notes on here, on there. Um, they're pretty, pretty descriptive. Um, we're going to go look at my in-game time, too. And you can also see the previous run that I did.
because I should have that saved in there too. But yeah, I'm really proud of this. As you can see, my sum of best down in the lower right um, is 113, so that's definitely something I could work towards. I don't know that I'll ever get that, or that I'll ever put in enough time to get that. But I mean, hey, it's whatever. Yeah, you can see I lost an entire minute on that last phase. Which is disappointing, but oh well. Yeah, here's all the, the runs that I attempted before I recorded this one. Yeah, you can see my 119.54 and then my 118.31. The extra, like, 20 seconds is just from me quitting out. So, uh, yeah, that's the speedrun. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.